I'm McKenna, I'm the Summer Reading Club Coordinator, and today I have a very exciting video for us. I finally have chrysalises! So now we have two chrysalises because our two caterpillars became their chrysalises, uh, I believe it was yesterday, maybe the day before. It's a very quick process and it can happen um, without me even kind of realizing it's about to happen. There are some signs, of course, the size of the caterpillar indicates that they're about to go into their chrysalis, but otherwise, uh, next to the caterpillar crawling up and making their J, it just, it happens pretty fast. So of course I saw our two caterpillars walk up and find a nice comfy spot in their enclosure and go into their J formation, which we talked about in the last video. Um, but otherwise that actual transition into going into chrysalis happens very quickly. And so I will let you see uh, the video of our two chrysalises right now. Here is one of the chrysalises that our caterpillars became. And then here's the other one. I don't know why it chose to make it down here. Typically they like to hang, but I guess this little guy got a little bit tired climbing up. You can see the gold speckling. So now our caterpillars are into the chrysalis stage, which is the stage between caterpillar life and the five instars and butterfly life. Uh, monarch butterfly life and so in the last two weeks our caterpillars have eaten and eaten and in eaten and grew and grew and grew as you saw through all five instars and now they have become chrysalises and I'm sure you're like they became chrysalises that's really weird yes you actually heard that right they became their chrysalises so the monarch butterfly and most butterflies have the chrysalis within their bodies and they will become that chrysalis and that's the difference between a chrysalis and a cocoon so a chrysalis is when the caterpillar becomes the chrysalis and a cocoon is what a caterpillar makes around itself so the chrysalis is like i said inside of the caterpillar's body and all the caterpillar needs to do is shed its skin one last time and for the monarch caterpillar this means after their fifth instar they will crawl up uh, whatever it may be, let's say a tree branch, and they will hang and go into their J like we talked about in the last video. And then as you will see in the next video, and as well as the video I put in our last uh, update with each other, I caught on camera in a time lapse a chrysalis actually forming. And you'll see in that video that the caterpillar just kind of wriggles its skin down uh, one last time. So it's molting one last time or shedding its skin one last time. And then the chrysalis emerges. And it looks a little funny in that video because I didn't catch the chrysalis totally hardening. So that chrysalis would actually be squishy if you went and touched it, which you should never do. You should not touch a chrysalis. It's not safe for the chrysalis to do that. But uh, that's, that's what the caterpillar becomes is a chrysalis. So you will see that in the, in the video clip in a second and I'll put it back into this video just in case you missed it or you want to see it again and really watch how the skin comes down off of the caterpillar and out comes the chrysalis. And so as you have also seen in the first uh, little video clip I put in this update that our chrysalises are green. They're a very light green color and they would match almost any leaf, like a bright leaf color, like the maple tree behind me or even this host, uh, hosta behind me. And this is intentionally done by the caterpillar because that's one of their forms of defense is to blend in. But another um, form of defense that scientists don't totally understand is the gold speckling on chrysalises. And this is pretty weird and most scientists don't totally know why the gold speckling is on monarch butterfly chrysalises but they can guess it's probably for um, deterring prey and it's likely because just like if you put a mirror in the sunlight and sunbeams would come off of it and kind of blind you in your eyes the gold flecks they believe would do the same for birds or for any other prey so again it's not totally understand understood why there's gold and it's really interesting that gold is appearing in nature in the way it does for monarchs uh, but scientists do have their guesses and the major one is that it's to deter predators so like i said our caterpillars now that they have crawled up the side of their enclosure and they have gone into their j and they have now become chrysalises 
and they're nice and comfy there, they will take a nice 8 to 15 day nap. And like I said, it's probably more like 10 days for us here in Ontario, especially with the humid weather we have coming in. And so that chrysalis, uh, what you don't see in the videos that I show you is that they're actually attached to the enclosure with a web of silk. And I have before had to remove chrysalises off of some pretty funny places uh, just because they weren't safe where they were like on door handles to doors where uh, we walk into the house all the time or on light switches that we use all the time outside. And so if you were to actually see the chrysalis web, it's quite large. It's probably about the size of my hand or the palm of my hand and it spreads out across wherever the caterpillar chooses to make its chrysalis. And then uh, it's silk and you don't really see it. And it comes from a little black part of the chrysalis called a cremaster. So I'll show you here. So this is um, the book that we looked at a few weeks ago called From Egg to Butterfly by Shannon Zemlicka. And it's been published by Learner Publications Company. And you can take this book out if you want. Um, so this is a chrysalis up close. And this is the cremaster, this black piece. And you can see some of the silk going down across the uh, tree twig here. And then what you can also see is the green coloring and the gold speckles above this black line. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up very well, but if you were to have this book and look at it, you can also see the outlines of the butterfly wing, um, which become more prominent as the chrysalis gets older and older, especially before it opens. Uh, you can see the wings through the chrysalis perfectly because the chrysalis goes translucent uh, or completely see-through. And that's an indication that it's about to open. So to explain how the caterpillar goes from a caterpillar to a chrysalis to a butterfly a little easier because I know it's really weird to wrap your head around and think there's a chrysalis inside of a caterpillar's body. I actually have this fun little puppet here that zips open to show you. So what we just had was our caterpillar and it went through, or our two caterpillars, and they went through the five instart. So this is our little caterpillar. And then what they did was they climbed up the enclosure that I have them in and they found a nice comfy spot. Uh, some of them like to crowd around each other. One of them decided to make it on the side of the enclosure, which is kind of funny. And then they'll hang in their J, which this guy doesn't really do very well. And then as you saw in the time lapse, they will rigor wiggle the skin down off of them and out will come a chrysalis. So just like this uh, caterpillar puppet, a chrysalis will come out, not with a zipper though. <laughs> There's no zipper on monarch caterpillars. And then out comes the chrysalis, just like this. So this is our beautiful chrysalis and it will hang and there's gold on it, gold on the bottom too, and the wing shape. And this will hang for, like I said, eight to 14 days. For us, it'll probably be about 10. And then after it's ready, inside of this chrysalis is our monarch butterfly. So when you see a monarch caterpillar, what you're actually seeing is a caterpillar that has a chrysalis within it, and within that chrysalis is the body parts for a monarch butterfly. That's really crazy that that little tiny caterpillar has all of those body parts. And then that chrysalis opens up and a beautiful monarch butterfly comes out. Just like this, not this big though. Although that would be, that would pretty, be pretty scary if this big of butterflies flew around. And then you can see there's black speckling on the butterfly face and white and black speckling on the wings. And this one, and we'll talk about this more when we have butterflies, is actually a male butterfly. And I can tell just by the spots on the wings. So hopefully that helps explain what happens in the monarch butterfly life cycle. It can be quite confusing to understand and to comprehend that there's actually the body parts of the chrysalis and the butterfly within that tiny little caterpillar. Something I wanted to talk about was the difference between a cocoon and a chrysalis a little bit more into detail because a lot of people use chrysalis and cocoon interchangeably, but they're actually not interchangeable words. They're very similar uh, parts within the life cycles of the butterfly and the moth and they are 
essentially the same but in the same they play the exact same role but the way that they are formed is completely different so a cocoon is a silky encasing that surrounds moths which with the exception of a few butterflies only moths create cocoons and if you happen to know a butterfly that creates a cocoon here in north america i don't know of any personally maybe you can comment it below because that would be really interesting to learn about so they create this encasing which is very similar to a sleeping bag if you were to curl up in a sleeping bag and put the top over and stay there and keep nice and warm uh, to protect them while they go through the process called metamorphosis and that's a really big word um, but metamorphosis is when an insect transitions into its more mature form so for butterflies and moths the more mature form of a caterpillar is the butterfly so the metamorphosis process is the what they're going through between caterpillar stage and butterfly or monarch stage so a chrysalis, as I have talked about, is also a casing that surrounds the caterpillar like a sleeping bag, but is not uh, created by the caterpillar around themselves. It actually comes out of themselves, like I said, and like I showed you uh, with our uh, puppet. So the uh, inside of the caterpillar's body has all the parts for the chrysalis and for the butterfly, as I said before. And unlike a cocoon, a chrysalis is not silky. So a cocoon is actually a silky um, material, and it would actually it would probably be fairly soft to the touch if you touched it. And a chrysalis is more um, slimy is not the right word, but it it's almost feels wet to touch, but it's not necessarily wet. It's very smooth if you were to touch them. And I think it's important to say that if you see a chrysalis or a cocoon, you shouldn't touch them. Don't disrupt the life cycle. They are very delicate and they can withstand quite a lot of rain and wind, but a uh, human touch probably not very much of. So you should just not touch them at all if you see them. And chrysalises become hard to the touch like plastic after they have set for a few hours. And once the chrysalis is fully formed, like I said, it feels fairly firm to the touch if you were to touch it. And a really quick way to tell if you found a moth or a butterfly is by looking at the caterpillar. And although this is not necessarily a touch and go rule, it is fairly definitive here in North America. So if the caterpillar is fuzzy, you've most likely found a moth. And if the caterpillar is not fuzzy and it looks more smooth, um, maybe has little rolls sort of like the Michelin man, that's typically how I can explain a caterpillar. Uh, of a butterfly, then it's most likely a caterpillar of a butterfly and not a moth. So most of the time, moths here in North America are fuzzy and they kind of look like if you were to touch them, they'd be nice and soft. And a caterpillar of a butterfly looks more like it has almost like a plasticky skin or a smooth skin. And um, it's unlikely that they would be fuzzy in any way. So today's storybook that I wanted to read is Moth and Butterfly, written by Dev Petty, illustrated by Anna Aranda, and it's been published by Nancy Polson Books. And I thought it was a good book for today since we talked about the difference between chrysalises and cocoons. Moth and Butterfly. Ta-da! In a corner of the lush green garden, two caterpillars share a leaf. Do you notice uh, the difference between our caterpillars? We just talked about it. Do you notice one of them is a little fuzzier than the other? They have a lot in common. Many legs, spots, and these two bees say cool moves. And look, both are champions at chewing leaves into funny shapes. Ta-da, amazing. Oops, I think he ate through the leaf. Soon, something important will happen to each of them. Happy metamorphosis. We just learned about that word. Something amazing is happening in here. A week passes. Do you notice the difference between our two uh, chrysalises and cocoons? Can you guess which one's a chrysalis and which one's a cocoon? And another. Then pop! There is a butterfly. Then pop, 
again, there is a moth. Wow, they have changed. They have fewer legs now, but they have antennae and wings. Look, moth, my wings are so bright. And mine are so beige. At first, it's almost like before, though now they drink sweet nectar instead of chewing leaves. And look, they can fly. Moth and butterfly together again. But soon, they noticed other differences. Butterfly is fast and graceful. Moth darts around and bumps into everything. Have you ever noticed about that about moths? They like to bump into everything. They're kind of silly. He says, oops, are you okay? Butterfly likes sunshine and standing out. Moth loves shade and blending in. And Butterfly says, moth, where are you? Right here. Moths typically are out during the night while butterflies are out during the day, but again, that's not necessarily true for every moth and every butterfly. Butterfly flies in the daytime and sleeps at night. Moth sleeps in the day and flies at night. He is waking up now. And he says, time to rise and shine, butterfly. And butterfly says, but moth, it's almost bedtime. Sometime, some things are different, but some things are the same. Who moves? Moth and butterfly both smile when they spy two young caterpillars sharing a leaf. They know important things are about to happen. Happy metamorphosis, they say. Oh, do you notice something about those two caterpillars? So I wanted to provide another suggestion of how you can help. And so although monarchs are migrating species, some butterflies do not migrate here in North America. And to help support non-migrating butterflies, you may consider leaving leaf piles in the fall around your yard where these butterflies can actually hibernate. So what they will do is they will burrow in these leaf piles and they will stay there and it'll keep them nice and nestled and warm throughout the winter so that come the spring they can leave and then go lay their eggs wherever they may. So like I said, monarch butterflies fly down south, they migrate, but we have a lot of species of butterflies here in Ontario that actually don't do that. So you may decide to leave some leaf piles once you uh, rake up your leaves in the fall, just under some trees, and then they will naturally rot and provide um, nutrients to your trees or your lawn or wherever it may be that you did so um, throughout the spring and summer. I just wanted to thank you all for joining me once again. Today was a very exciting video. We are finally getting into the last stages of the monarch butterfly life cycle. And I know today was a little bit longer of a video, but I think uh, I was really excited about it. And I think it was super important to talk about the difference between a chrysalis and a cocoon. So now if you see a chrysalis or cocoon, you know, A, not to touch it and B, you might be able to tell if it's a moth or a uh, butterfly and then you can share that with others. So I hope that you enjoyed today and I will see you in a few days for a check-in on our chrysalises. Bye.